One of my biggest things about Europe and one of the biggest things I was worried about was language because I am really bad at different languages. I butcher them so bad. The only place that I really knew anything was France and I just know the basics like hello, goodbye, thank you, whatever. Uh, but everyone speaks English. We didn't have a problem at all. Um, there was a few times where we got lost and we went up to people and was like, bonjour, do you speak English? And they were like, yes, no, whatever. There was only one time when a lady didn't speak English. She still helped us anyway and pointed us in the right direction and we ended up getting where we needed to go anyway. So don't worry about language because even if they don't speak English, you probably can work out what they're saying anyway. And with like restaurant menus, they always had an English menu on the side as well. So they had their language and then if you asked for an English menu, they'd bring it out to you as well. And so everyone was really good with the whole English language barrier. One thing I learned was don't waste your time doing something you don't want to do. If you're with a group of people that want to go and do something else, but you don't want to do that and you want to do this thing, then go do that thing you want to do. Don't just be a sheep and follow the group because that's where they're going. I can't stress that enough because you don't want to waste your time doing something that you don't want to do. You didn't go to the other side of the world to follow other people around. And at the start, that was me. And then I quickly learnt that I'm not enjoying myself, so I need to do exactly what I want to do. So even if that means going off by yourself or going off with one person or like a completely different group to who you haven't socialised with yet, it's probably the better choice for you because you're doing what you want to do. Just, just remember that. Make sure you get out there and experience the culture and the different foods and that's probably like one of the coolest things is they don't eat and do the same things that we do in Australia. Uh, when I was in Italy, actually, I was really, really sick and I could barely eat anything. So I still haven't tried Italian pizza. I tried a few different gelatos but couldn't taste them. And I ate the pasta but didn't like it because I couldn't taste it. So that's really disappointing. But everywhere else I tried the food. I tried snails in France. Never again. <laughs> if you want to see my reaction, go and watch my vlogs. I'll have them all linked down below anyway. But yeah, make sure you go out and experience the culture and their food and just their way of life. Also, don't let the weather deter you from doing things. Like in London and places like that, it's bound to rain. So just put on a raincoat, you can buy an umbrella, something like that. And just go out, walk in the rain. It doesn't matter. It's just water. Don't be one of those people that stand there and whinge about the weather either. Yes, it's cold. Yes, it's rainy. Everyone gets that. But if you bitch winch and mode, BMW, people are going to get annoyed at you, so just don't. Because I was in Europe for so long, we saw so many museums and churches and stuff like that. Trust me, by the end of them, you're going to get sick of them, but you just have to go into all of them, take photos, like, take it all in while you're there. It's because you're probably never going to go back to those places, so just look at it, take it in while you're there. One of the best things for you to do if you are going on such a big holiday, keep a travel diary or a video diary or something like that. I took a travel diary but I just I can't sit there and write a lot. It's just not me. So that's why I make these videos and vlogs and stuff like that because I can look back on them and know exactly what it was like and what we experienced and stuff like that. So yeah, this is exactly why I make these videos. It's the best thing about making them. Every hotel with Kentucky breakfasts are included. It is a cold continental breakfast. Just, just remember that it's cold continental. I thought continental breakfast, like yeah, whatever, like bacon, eggs, what we have in Australia. No, everywhere in Europe is cereal, toast, cheese, cold meats and croissants. That's it. There was only two hotels, I think, that we got bacon and eggs, and apparently that's really rare. But, yeah, so don't get, like, all excited about this big buffet breakfast. It is a buffet, but it's cold. I am not a toast, cereal, or cheese eater, so I had a really big problem with breakfasts. So I just lived off croissants most of the time. Croissants and juice was what I lived off. But if they ever had... A kind of like a bowl of fruit 
go for it. Like, oh, it was so good to eat fruit. Your trip manager and your bus driver are like the coolest people you'll ever meet. Um, our tour manager, Cam, was so knowledgeable. He's like knowledge of history was incredible so when your tour manager is up on the microphone make sure you be quiet so you can listen to what he has to say if you're not interested be quiet anyway because some people are there was a lot of chit chat going on when my tour manager was on the microphone a few times and all I wanted to do was turn around and tell everyone to shut up because I actually enjoyed listening to them things because you learn stuff. Your tour manager will also suggest some places to go to, like places to eat or places to see or museums to go to or something like that. If you're those type of people that like to go to suggested places, then definitely do them because I pretty much went to every place my tour manager like suggested and 9 out of 10 times it was definitely the place to go. One of the only places that I was like, why did he suggest this, was a sex machine museum in Prague. I don't know why I went there to be honest, but he did suggest that we went and yeah, waste of money, waste of time, but that was the only one that I had a problem with. At the end of your tour, you were supposed to tip your Kentucky manager and the bus driver. And if you think they've done a really good job, then definitely tip them good. They recommend two euros a day, I think. So two euros for 21 days was 42 euros, which is a lot when you convert it to Australian dollars. But honestly, they do the best job and everything's so organized and literally you have the best time because of the way they've done things. So I tip them pretty good to be honest and if anyone else is that generous and thinks they've done a really good job then definitely tip them good. In Florence, I think I said this earlier, but we went to a nightclub called Space Disco Nightclub and it was literally one of the best nights ever. And if you go downstairs, so the bottom level is karaoke, top level is a nightclub. So if you go downstairs and ask for Gigi, get one of Gigi's cocktails. Oh my god, they are like the best thing ever. After three cocktails, I was gone. <laughs> but literally, they're so good. And yeah, Gigi is an awesome guy and he's just... He loves to party. On the first or second day of your trip, you get a Kentucky song and a wake up song. So our Kentucky song was Fast Cars by Jonas something or other. I can't remember it. But that yeah, they'll play that every morning. It'll be the first song they play. And then you'll get a wake up song, which plays 15 minutes before every stop. So it pretty much plays and it's telling you wake up, get your stuff ready, we're about to get off the bus. And ours was All Star by Smash Mouth. And honestly, you hear that song probably four or five times a day. And by the end of the trip, you do not ever want to hear that song again. It's very, very annoying. But hey, I know all the words to it now. So it's one good thing, right? On your trip, you'll get a chance to buy a Kentucky t-shirt and a group photo. I recommend buying these so much. The t-shirt is amazing and your Kentucky manager will actually do the design. I can't find mine at the moment. I tried to, I wanted to wear it for this video, but I can't find it. But it's just, I got a black one on the back. It says like the name of the trip, the dates. Um, then we have our group photo and then hashtag turn down for what underneath. Long story, but yeah. Um, and our photo photo comes in this and then we got a group photo in Florence oh the windows on it yeah that's what it looks like and the shirt was 19 euro and this photo was 11 euro I think it's definitely worth getting because their memories you're gonna keep forever if you can before you go on Kentucky and even after you get home train your body to get into the right pattern before you get to Europe or get back to Australia or wherever you're going because if you do that then the easier it is going to be to get over jet lag. I didn't get jet lagged at all going over there because I slept the whole second flight which was 13 and a half hours and I woke up and we landed at 7 o'clock in the morning so then I was refreshed for the whole day. On the way back it is a lot harder because we got back at night time so obviously then we had to go home and sleep but somehow we managed to do it and I barely got jet lagged at all so yeah just train your body if you can and it's a lot easier. 
There are so many scammers and pickpocketers, especially in Paris, Venice and Rome. Um, just be careful of your bags. Don't wear backpacks if you can wear like handbags that can go across your shoulder like that um, and you can put them at the front of you. Uh, we witnessed someone get pickpocketed so it was very scary. Um, so yeah, just be aware of that. Just watch out for sus looking people. Prague is definitely the best place for shopping if you want to go like clothes shopping, shoe shopping, anything like that. Um, there's so many shopping centers around. There was one near the hotel where we stayed at and there's also one like pretty much directly in the center of Prague. So if you want to go shopping and you go to Prague, definitely leave it till then. I did just want to let everyone know that the Kentucky cough is real. Our tour manager Cam kept telling us that the Kentucky cough isn't real because Kentucky didn't invent a cough, but it's just what it's labeled because you were pretty much guaranteed to get sick. I was pretty much the first one to get sick and I got labeled the day to sneeze because I kept sneezing and literally I was sick for probably about five days straight, like really sick. But it's just the change in environment and food and temperature and everything so it's not really Kentucky related it's just the germs going around in the bus but make sure you have every drug under the sun like neurofin, cold and flu, any histamines just everything you can think of and just take them and have them when you need them and you'll be fine. And Switzerland and Prague do not use euros um, I knew about this but didn't realize that they didn't use euros at all. There's a few places in Prague that take euros, but not many at all. Um, so in Prague, they use coronas and it's very confusing to work out. Um, and Switzerland, they use the Swiss franc, which isn't confusing at all. So on the way into Switzerland, we stopped at a service stop that had an exchange little place. So we could exchange our euros into Swiss franc. Uh, which was all good and then the same with Prague as well. Don't worry about it before you leave, um, you'll be able to exchange it when you get there. And we were there for two days Switzerland, two days Prague and I only transferred over 50 euros for each. Uh, 50 euros was plenty in Switzerland, I actually had extra money left over and I just ended up spending it on random things because I didn't want to exchange it back and in Prague I didn't realize how good the shopping was so 50 euro was definitely not enough I think I probably spent just over a hundred euro so I ended up just using my cash passport card um, and obviously I didn't have coronas on my cash passport so it got just got taken out of euros there was a conversion fee but it was only 24 cents so I didn't really mind about that so, so just keep in mind if you are going to Switzerland or Prague in the Czech Republic um, yeah they don't take euros they have their own currency so yeah just be aware of that and that is all I can think of at the moment this video is probably being really long or it's been split into two I'm not sure yet just depends how long it is so yeah if you have any other questions leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you but I think that's all for now if you are going on a Kentucky have fun it will literally be the best thing you ever do in your life. I'm already in the planning process of my next one and I've only been back for like a week or so. So yeah, thank you for watching guys. Um, I hope this helps someone out and stay tuned for my next video which shouldn't be too far away. Bye!